Welcome. Thanks for joining this video. In a previous webinar, we shared the basics on setting up and using Octree as event website tools. With some small changes, you can make a big impact. Today, we are going to focus on elements, how to configure and how to stylize those. You're gonna come away with the knowledge and confidence to use and try out all the fun elements and make your event website special. The last quarter of 2020, there were over 1,500 auctions that came through Octria. This was for all types of fundraising groups, charities, foundations, communities. We saw fantastic success with groups bringing in over $15 million. We're gonna talk about the use and configuration of all the fun elements within the Octria website editor. We're gonna start with the home page in the menu. We'll chat about system and custom pages. We'll talk about the website elements and the pre-built content. And no auction website is complete without some buttons, a catalog, a progress tracker, and a video. We're gonna start at the top level here, the home page, adding custom pages to the website, and then choose any of those to be indicated as the home page. The home page choice is made by you, the admin, and should be based on the activity of what's going on to show as a landing page. So if you're doing ticket sales, make the home page your ticket pages. The less clicks, the quicker the viewer can make a transaction. Let's take a closer look. For website pages, we have system pages and custom pages. The little greenhouse is the indicator as to which page is the home page. So when you give out the URL, this is where the viewer will land. The home icon can be moved at any time. I wanna bring your attention to two system pages though, and just clarify these. You've got shopping cart and you've got account, which is actually my account when somebody is logged in. So the shopping cart is used for immediate payment. It's typically used for admission tickets, for sale items, raffles, tickets, drink tickets, merchandise. And the account page shows what has been purchased, currently winning bids, or the user can make a payment by choosing the payment button on that page. These system pages sound similar, but the function is related to the end game. And by end game, I mean when payment is made. Okay, so that's for the pages that are available. Now we're shifting to the menu, and this is what you want to make view visible to the viewer. If you added a custom page, it's now available to use on the menu. You can add a link to a page, you can add a link to a special page. I have a video and in, the, in this example, we're gonna be adding a page for item solicitation. I'll also show you how to link to an external page and I'll also show you how to add a coming soon page. Here we go. Adding your page to the website can be used in a couple different ways. There's system pages and custom pages. I'm gonna add in a website custom page here and I'm gonna do one for donating an auction item to your auction. So I'm gonna do add a new page. We have a pre-built section for this. Click item solicitation and a beautiful form shows up. This information will get downloaded directly into your dashboard. You can include the actual letter in a PDF format on your website also. That way people can see it directly on the website without having to leave the auction page. And this is how that looks. Upload the PDF and it will reside on your website. Then let's make this a little nicer. Let's add a heading at the top. Let's say something nice about donating an auction. How about thanks for filling out the form and a huge thank you. I hit the update button and then I'll see everything gets, gets updated dynamically. Suppose you want to link to a website page, an outside website page. You can do that. I'm going to demonstrate this by linking to the Octria webinars page. So whatever you want to call the title, maybe about us, where this would link to, and then come down here. You want it to open in a separate window and you want to put in the website address. So I'm doing this to the Octria webinars page. Click on it and that's where the person will land in a new tab. Okay, let's talk about adding a coming soon page. We get asked this a lot. You can add a new page. I'm gonna just put in a blank here for empty 
And then I have a real pretty image that I want to include that talks about coming soon. This is a good way to put a placeholder on your website so people know that there's activity coming. However, if they want to come visit, they'll know that they need to come back also. I made this GIF directly on Canva using the same background image. I automated it and you can see how easy that is. If I want to make that my home page, I click on the button, click the home, save that. And now when people come to my website, they'll come directly to the coming rows, columns, and pre-built content. These are the building blocks that you'll use for your event website. When you're working on your website, you want to add meaningful information, create content, and a call to action for the why people should give or donate. Altria will facilitate the how. To add your content, use a row, a column, a section, a pre-built section, any of these building blocks. Here's how you're going to do it. You're going to click add row or section or column. Drag and drop that on the page. Then choose the number of columns you want, whether it's one, two, three, or four, and drag that to your preferred location. That would be the main body of the website or the header or the footer. You can also click the plus button to add content. Let's look a little closer at step three. To add more content, such as text or image or buttons, you'll most likely find what you are looking for under basic content and rich content. Here's what this all looks like in real time. You can really customize your website. I'm going to add a section and I'm going to put in three columns here because I'm going to show you how to go from three to two once you've already built it. So I put in three columns. I'm going to add some text in the first one. I'm going to add a photo in the second one. And for the third one, let's go ahead and use under rich content, a profile card. I love profile cards. So for the text, suppose I just want to put a little title in here and call it, we celebrate because I want to talk about who we're celebrating in our event. I'm going to type that in, hit update. Looks okay. You know what? I'm going to move the profile card to the left, move the image over to the right, can drag and drop that. You know what? After all that, I think I want to get rid of the image on the right. I only want two columns. So I can edit the columns as they would look on a desktop, on a tablet, and on a phone. And since I only have two, I want them to each be at half size. So I make that update and click update. Okay, that's looking a little better. Now I wanna make this text much larger. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it larger and then I will center it, click update. And then I want it centered within the column. I've got a quick little toggle here I can use to do that with. See how quickly that happens? And let's see how it looks from the outside. Now that you've got the blocks, let's talk about the tools to tweak those blocks. Tools for your catalog and your cards. This is a general concept that you're gonna be using in all catalogs. And the item catalog is obviously the most obvious. Um, this logic is also applied to the sponsor section and the donor section. Those are catalogs too. The catalog is made up of cards. To make changes to either one of these, it takes a special tool, and there's two. There is a COG, C-O-G, and a bullseye. The COG selects what shows in that section with overall selections and conditions. You can make the edits there. And then the bullseye is used in the item catalog to choose the card sizes and options of what you want shown on the actual item card. Let's look at this a little closer. For an item card, it shows your item size, and then there's all sorts of toggles for each catalog type, reveals its own card options. And then for catalog cog, it activates the selected element. It shows you your items that are displayed. And then when you click on the cog, you've got those indicators on the right, those icons. You've got your pencil, you've got your refresh, your copy, duplicate, and delete buttons. On the catalog, you want to click the cog to select the elements that will be shown in that catalog. You can refine that even further with conditions. Most frequently used catalog cards for an auction with lots of items are cards A, B, and C. 
They look familiar if you've explored the profile cards. Then you have a few choices from there on the number of columns per row. You can do two, three, four, and six. I'll show you the video, but here's some still images so you can absorb the styles. The screenshot to the right is focused on the toggles that you can move left and right to turn off and on some elements. This is a good example of where you may want to turn off some of those toggles. This is a catalog full item card. This is good for tickets or a live auction preview where there's a small number of items. You would wanna turn off the toggles that aren't relevant. Obviously you would need to enable search or enable pagination because there's just a couple things that are on that page. Catalog style A has the item image using the space at the top of the item card. Catalog card style B has the item image in a spotlight circle and a diagonal background. Yes, you can customize that image and I'll show you how to do that on the video. And then catalog style C has the item image in a spotlight circle with a full background image. Let's go to the video. So I started this auction with the template for online auction items. So that's what's showing in my catalog here and it automatically goes to item card A. So I'm gonna show you how to change what's viewed on there. So I'm gonna click off online, click the for sale. Now it's gonna show all the items that I have loaded through the dashboard as on for sale items. I can further refine that with these add condition areas. You can see there's tags, categories, search terms. I'm gonna do sponsorships. And now I have just my gold, my silver, and my um, bronze. I'm gonna change those to full items so they go across the page. I'm gonna turn off allow drill for details because I don't necessarily need that. People just need to add it to the cart and make a purchase. So I'm gonna go back and change my catalog again so that you can see how easily you can move that. I'm gonna get rid of the sponsorships and I'm gonna show you all the um, online items and show you how we can configure this a little more. So we ended up with our full item card because that's what we had tagged on there. Let's change this. We've got card item A, and it's the two across with the image at the top. We've got B, and it's got a pretty little diagonal in the back. I'm gonna show you how to change that. And card item C has a full background. Like I said, I'm gonna show you how to change that, but that's what it would look like for cards item, item cards A, B, and C. Click the bullseye. This is where I can make changes to that background image. I happen to have one that matches my auction catalog here. This may look familiar. And I'm gonna upload that and it covers the entire background. Now it'll match the entire auction as I move through it. If I want to make additional changes to the columns across, this is two across, I can go four across. You can see how that looks. I have a lot of items so it looks okay um, and then you can change the background blur so you can modify that i've gone to a 20 and then i'll go to a one and show you what that looks like that's going to make it um, even more distinctive and then the background scaling i've scaled it way down to one so then it's going to give you a grid pattern if you scale it up you'll see how that gets manipulated and if i go even larger that's how that looks too so I've still got the same colors and the tones that I have in the header, and it matches the entire theme of the auction. One more fun way to change your background images is to use the item image, and I can pull that right here from your source, and it brings up an item image that I had loaded from the dashboard. Let's blur that out a little bit to give it a nicer effect, and you can see exactly how that would look on your website. You may want to add a page just for raffle or admission tickets. You can add a catalog for those too and include only the items that you want to show. If that's the case, add a catalog and select items that are considered raffle. And in this case, I turned off the toggles for allow drill for details or show groups or enable search. This allows for a much cleaner page. Pre-built elements make quick work of adding a button, a donation element, a countdown clock, and a progress tracker. Our developers made these as smart elements, and this pulls the triggers from your dashboard settings. 
Button configuration is available for both action and style. You can change the label of the button, the target will it will take you to, or even show a video. You can also change the color and style to match the overall theme. I'm going to use this video also to illustrate the copy element task. This is a major time saver. Better to show than tell. You can configure a button a couple different ways. In this template, two buttons came in. Let's show you how to do these on a separate sandbox page. I'm just gonna add a row and add three sections. If I hit the plus content, I can just add a button plus content. These are basic content pieces that I'm picking these up at because I wanna show you how to do those. I can hit the cog, hit edit, change the label. Instead of it saying click here, let's go ahead and put the word donate an auction item and that changes the label. I'm gonna hit the target and I'm gonna choose the page that it's redirecting to. So it's gonna to redirect to my page that I have where you can solicit for donations. I'll do that again. I'll hit the cog, hit edit, change the label to whatever I want it to be. How about see our video? And then I'm gonna change this to show video and a video address. I have a Vimeo video. And then somebody can click the button and see the video hit play and they can float that video around. So that's using a button as a video link. And then I'm going to show you one more time. If I come over to the left, I can do a lot of the same things. I can change the label on the left and then I can change the size and the source and the colors. And Varian is referring to the colors. So this is picking up on the palette that I had loaded into the system under theme. So you can see as I make changes, it picks up my warning color. The hot pink looks really nice. So I'm gonna keep that one. I wanna show you one more thing over here. You can also change the alignment. You can change it to full width and you can also change the shape and that's under appearance. So I can make it pill, see how it rounds the sides and that looks a little nicer. Now I'm pleased with how that looks. Um, I can go ahead and duplicate that. If I love that shape, that form, that everything, just duplicate it and then I can take that copied element over and move it. I then I just need to adjust the label and where I want that button to take somebody to. Let's talk donations here. And I also wanna chat about payment behavior and configuration as well as styling. The out of the box template has immediate payment and cash donation element. You can further configure your donation item and set that up from the dashboard. Most people will just leave the default where the dollars would be on account for bidders. Otherwise, for people that aren't registered, it would be for immediate payment. I'll put a page of the user guide in there so that you can get the details. I've prepared a video here showing you how to add and modify a donation element. I've also included some bonus material to show you how to access images that we have curated for your use on your website page. This is what the cash donation element looks like directly out of the box. This is the setup and this is the image. Let's go over to our demo event that we're working on. You can see it's the same thing. I'm gonna configure this though, and I'm gonna change the amount that's showing up in the buttons there. So I want my top one to be 5,000 instead of 2,500. I just simply go in here, change the amount, hit save. And then you'll see it goes from 2,500 to 500. Here's a couple more things you can do. I can pick up donation items that I've created in my dashboard. So I have a fund to need in there that's got multi levels. I'm going to choose that and it brings up the image that I had attached to it within the item dashboard within the system. And those increments are listed there that I had set up on the element. You can change the photo by uploading your own photo, use Pexels or Unsplash, but Octria also has a file folder of images. You can pick one of those if you like it, adjust it, and upload it, save it, and you can see how that looks on your page. Let's talk about the countdown clock now. You can configure the target date as well as the style. The countdown clock is a smart element. 
that configures with a target that you had set up in the dashboard. Again, here comes the cog. We're going to click that to select the target source. And then for style, you can make changes to the title of the section, as well as change the colors of the boxes and change the color of the text within the boxes. Off to the video we go. The countdown clock is a great way to bring a call to action on your website. You can access this two different ways. I'm gonna click on the element and on the left, I can configure it. And these are already loaded with the information that you loaded into the dashboard. I can access that through the cog also, but I wanna change this title. See how it says title can be edited? I don't want that on there. So I'm just gonna eliminate it and you can call your title whatever you want here and see it's gone, it says online bidding. Here's what it looked like before, here's what it looks like now. And then I can go ahead and hide the seconds also. But you may wanna see how that looks on the mobile device. Yep, that looks good. So let's go ahead and talk about a custom time. So I'm in my sandbox page. I click more column content. I'm clicking on a countdown clock and you may wanna use this for a raffle. You're counting down to when you're gonna pull the raffle. So you can configure this. I'm gonna add a target and I'm gonna put a custom date in here. Click the pencil and I'm gonna give it a title that's relevant. So I'm gonna put on there raffle drawing and then I'm gonna set the date for when the raffle is going to be pulled. I come down to custom date, it gives me a little calendar. I pick and choose what I want, click save, and there it is. That's my raffle drawing with the title and the countdown. Of course, I don't wanna leave it at red and white. I wanna change this. So I'm gonna pick up my colors that I have in the system. For the odd colors, I'm gonna make that the nice dark color. And then for the evens, I'm gonna pick up the hot pink. And that'll look a little different than the countdown clock that I have on the front page, bringing attention to the fact that this is for my raffle drawing. So I'll click that to the pink, and then I can view the website as the public would see it, clicking the eyeball. Progress tracker can be in the form of a thermometer or just some text. The tracker is configured by the income source that you designate. The default is all income. Should you wanna modify that, we suggest modifying the title as well so the viewers know exactly what they're looking at. You may want to use the progress tracker thermometer for a single item donation, typically in a fund and need scenario. You can adjust the income source just for that one single donation item. Off to the video we go. On this template, it has a progress tracker and the progress tracker by default is recording all the income for your entire event. And of course, with Octria, there's different ways that you can display that. So you can configure this as a thermometer or as total funds raised. And it just shows you the dollar figure. Let's go back to the thermometer and do a little more editing. You can change the title of your thermometer. It automatically says title can be edited, so I'm just gonna knock off that part so that it says our fundraising target. Hit save and you can see that's exactly how it looks. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other things you can configure. You can configure the income source and those are all listed here in the dropdown where it will show those incomes on that thermometer. You can access that from the cog, click the pencil, and the same thing pops up, your select source. If you want a donation piece just for a specific fund -a need item where you have a donation button as well as a matching thermometer, you can see how I did that. I pulled it in as a section, I added the donation slash thermometer, and then I can make adjustments to that for the select source for income. So so under condition, I'm going to choose select items and then I'm going to go ahead and choose the item that I want that to show. I click on the button and then I'm going to use the building fund to need here. So once I start to type it in, it shows up. 
I hit save and you'll see this thermometer will show zero because I don't have any income for that. But that will go directly to the information that's tied to that donation item. Let's talk videos now. You can add a video to state the mission of the cause, why you are asking for a fund to need. Consider this a moving hero image, a hard string video per se. Videos can be inline, which means it's locked on the page at that exact location. Picture in picture means that when you click the video, it's now floating. It can be moved by the user and follows the viewer as they move from page to page. Vimeo or a YouTube link is required to do this. Yes, this can be an unlisted video. It's always visible on the website. You can do as a standalone video on the website and it's good for your impact video or after the virtual event closes, post the replay as well as the donation button for additional income opportunities. You can have a button for video. I showed that a little earlier. This is a good use on a live auction page. The user can click the button, then the window is free floating and can be moved and adjusted for size. There's also picture in picture and this is ideal for a live auction page during a virtual event. Picture in picture, this is what this looks like in a still frame so that you can see the video is floating. And since we're on the subject of video, I have one little hot tip. You can use video in an item description. However, this is added in the dashboard, not the website editor. This is a still shot of video for use in a description of an auction item. On this page for fund to need, there's a few images, but also a short video of the principal showing how the funds will be used to update the weight room. This is great for 3D objects, keepsakes, or something like a vacation or a hotel experience where video can show and tell a more complete story. I'm gonna start adding video. I'm gonna just add in a section here with two columns to show you how to do this. I hit the plus content, slide on down the pre-built, and choose video. Now we just have a placeholder in here and you have to put in your video that you want. You can use Vimeo or YouTube and you'll need either the full URL or the video ID. If I have just the video ID, that's the short number, I'll include that in here after I've chosen Vimeo and sure enough, it pops right up. Then I can come over to the left and if I want it to be picture in picture, I toggle on that button. And if I don't love the label there, you can change that also. I'm just gonna add um, now at the end. So picture in picture mode, view now. Let's do it again. Pre-built section, toggle, pencil, and then for this one, I'm gonna use the long URL. Suppose somebody gave me that, I didn't know whether it was coming from Vimeo or YouTube, just drop it in, hit done, and that's how nicely it looks. So when you enter picture in picture mode, somebody can watch it along on the website, or they can actually decide that they want to enter picture in picture mode by clicking the button where it says picture in picture, and then it becomes free floating and they can move it anywhere along the page and it'll follow the viewer as they move from page to page. For the one that's in line, you can see that stays static right in the location where you put it, and that maintains the design that you want for your website. Video makes the website come to life. Let's talk about pulling it all together. You can move your home icon based on your event activity. You can put buttons at the top of a homepage for quick access to donate or register. You can add a coming soon page you can add a coming soon section for a catalog. We showed you a couple different ways to add video and some groups will add a custom page for a frequently asked questions page with a contact us at the bottom. And you don't have to worry about the online auction bidding. The system will open and close that automatically.